Jesus provides us with the greatest ever example of faithfulness. Philippians 2 verses 5, 11 describes that faithfulness and calls us to imitate it. Let the same mind be in you that was in Jesus Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human kindness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of God. Gracious and loving God, you are so patient with us. And sometimes we are so slow to have our faith and to show our faith. In this hour, let us be quiet and still before you and listen to your words to us. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you our rock, and our Redeemer. Amen. For some obscure reason, one Greek word that I've always remembered is faith. It's pistis. You would think that Galatians 5.22 would have some derivative version of that word, that would change faith into faithful or faithfulness. But what's actually there is just the root word, faith. Now, I'm not about to argue with a Bible translator who say the gift of the Spirit, the fruit, is faithfulness. They know way more than I do. But I don't always understand their choices. Granted, the Greek word for faith carries elements of trust and confidence, as it does in English when we speak of having faith in God's promises. And faithfulness, by its nature, is a demonstration of such trust and confidence. Or it could be the translators feel there's not much difference between the spirit bearing the fruit of faith in us or the fruit of faithfulness. Or perhaps they used faithfulness instead of faith because faithfulness is the action, the visible consequence of our faith. And these fruits of the spirit aren't so much about what's going on in our hearts as it is about how they are shown in our lives. Jesus is the ultimate example of faithfulness, having been faithful to God his whole life and all his years of ministry, faithful in prayer, faithful in service, faithful in his humility, faithful in fulfilling words God had given to the prophets. Faithful to a call to ignore danger and go back to Jerusalem. Faithful even unto death. The disciples were faithful too. They stuck with Jesus for three years, according to the Gospel of John. 
They were faithful in listening, faithful in learning, faithful in following. And though they did desert him just before his death, they kind of made up for it in all the faithful work they did in his name in the years after. The people who heard Jesus or were healed by him and came to believe he was God's anointed, they were faithful in their trust in God's promises made so long ago. And of course, the great cloud of witnesses is full of faithful saints. All these provide models for us of trust and confidence. More important, though, they all show faith in action. It's more common to talk about faithfulness as an attitude, as being firm in our faith, not swayed or tempted by others' beliefs or by our culture or by money or power. When we say that what we give in time, talent, and treasure is a reflection of our devotion to God, we're showing faithful stewardship. Some ministers and televangelists promise a reward measurable in dollars and cents if people will be generous enough, faithful enough in their giving. We may think of faithfulness as an intangible attitude and even hope for a tangible reward. But in most biblical examples, it's the other way around. Their faithfulness is demonstrated in visible, concrete actions, like Abram following God. It's the reward that was intangible, like the whole nation of descendants that Abram didn't get to see. We need to have the attitude of faith, but our faithfulness will not be complete unless the action component is there as well, so that our faithfulness is a living, active demonstration of our faith. As for reward, it may not come in any tangible way, but I can assure you that in some way, in God's way, the faithfulness of faith in action will be rewarded. Yet faithfulness can also involve choices and place demands on us, including choices that have painful consequences. When faith demands hard choices, that can create difficulties for us at work, in relationships, or within our own hearts and lives. Faithfulness demands that our first priority always is to do what is right, what God wants. That's the question. Not, is this going to be easy? Nor, is this going to be hard? But this action or behavior I'm considering, is it going to be faithful? My grandfather once told my dad, happened to come after he had been faced with a difficult choice. He said, don't do something because it's easy. In other words, don't take the easy way out. But don't do something just because it's hard either. Just to prove you love God so much, you're willing to do it. Whatever you do, he said, 
Do because it's right. When Jesus rode into Jerusalem to shouts of acclaim, he didn't do it because that was easy. And he didn't walk to his death on a cross to show he could suffer as much as anyone and do it without complaint, no matter how hard that might be. No. Jesus did what he did because it was the right thing to do what God wanted of him. So he did it without measuring rewards or counting the cost. That's faithfulness. May the Holy Spirit bear in us such rich fruit that we will be as faithful to our God through our life as Jesus was throughout his. May we be given courage to put our faith into action and to be faithful always without measuring rewards or counting cost. Just doing what we believe is right in the eyes of God. Amen.